you mentioned George Orwell there. Mm-hmm. The Telegraph recently spoke about his bi- his wife's biography or autobiography. Oh, there's a new biography of Sonia Orwell, yeah. George Orwell was sadistic, misogynistic, homophobic, and sometimes violent. Biographer of the legendary writer's wife says darkness that runs through 1984 is a reflection of his soul. <laughs> Should we unperson George? Well, it would be the obvious end point to the full circle. Full circle. Um, yeah, I, I, th- this is just a way of the, for the author to get publicity, is to, to repeat things everyone knew. I mean, George Orwell held the views of his time about gay men, for instance. We know he was a little bit homophobic, but it was the 1940s, you know. Um, Nancy boys and so on, as he would have called them, <laughs> were not, you know, people weren't, that sounds Into like a it. like a, a 1990s taxi driver's insult that no, they've thrown out. It was, it was a sort of word that Orwell and people of his generation would use, you know, fairies, that sort of thing. And he does in some of his letters and some of his articles. But I mean, so fucking what? I don't care. I mean, was he sadistic? Probably. In some ways, sometimes. Was Could he be cruel and nasty? Probably, being a human being. I just think that, that the absurdity of our age of judging people in the past, well, you know, just, just wait till people do that to you. Yeah. You know, wait, wait till somebody weighs up your own life in the balance and finds you wanting. You know? I mean, I think it's preposterous. Human beings are what we are. Being amazed at us in the past is always just an expression of our own vanity and thinking we've got past all that. It's like the way if if a friend of mine was saying to me the other day when I was at Oxford, if you want to get a grant to study these days, say in English, and you were to choose Shakespeare as your subject of study, which is sort of unusual these days, uh, you would um, you would, for instance, have to uh, find Shakespeare guilty of you know racism, colonialist thinking, and so on. And it doesn't seem to strike these people that actually their job is not to judge Shakespeare. Shakespeare judges us. And he might find us wanting. How so? Well, he gives us visions of the universe and our place in it, which it would do us well to listen to. Um, And that might include exposing human follies, human weakness, human pride, human sin, human lust, the tendency to do evil in the name of doing good or think you're doing good and do great harm. So much more. All of this is in Shakespeare's work and his characters and the things he inv- he created in his mind and his work. I think that that if you look at a panoply of a vision like that, it, you should think, I wonder what he's telling us, rather than I wonder how I can judge him. What's the point of the latter? It's so boring. Human being from the past in human being in the past, shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Has it always been this way? Has it always been... Uh, people of the present judging people of yesterday by the standards of today? Um, Well, most people didn't have time in the past to engage in that. Um, Too busy trying to put food on the table or surviving past the age of 25, you know. Um, uh, But what it is in our current society is there's a very strange um, um, lack of respect for wisdom uh, Henry Kissinger just said this in the early years of the internet. He said, I, all the knowledge is there, but where's the wisdom? Mm. Uh, and people might not like me quoting Dr. Kissinger in that regard, but again, he knows a lot more than most of his critics. Um, I do think that's a, that's a, a stri- oddity of the age. I think the oddity, the vanity of trying to judge everyone from the past by our current standards is just absurd. I mean, you think you know more than Shakespeare? You think you know more than Orwell? Uh, these are minnows uh, snapping at giants. I don't care for them.